Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy. I am the dyer behind Stress Knits Yarn and this is my monthly video where I talk to you about what I've made in the past month and what I am planning to make and my making goals for the next month. So this is what I made in May and my plans for June. Today is June 3rd. 2021. Every time I say June 3rd, I just think of Gilmore Girls, right? Anyway, so I am coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, where I live with my husband, Doug, our daughter, Eliza, and our pug, Esther, who is laying down beside, beside me, behind me in her bed. So if you hear, oh, so bright. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to maybe tone this down a little bit. Maybe that's better. Um, I'm working, <laughs> this is what, my third video in this room? Second video? I don't remember. Um, we moved here a month ago, and so second video, and I have a window in front of me and on the side of me, and it's just very bright. So hopefully that's not too distracting. Maybe it looks really good. I don't know. Um, so mostly I talk about knitting, sometimes a little crochet, sometimes dyeing, um, yarn dyeing, and sometimes some gardening thrown in because I love gardening, specifically flowers. So if that interests you, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, do all those good things. Uh, it helps other crafty people find us. So thank you to everyone who is returning, and if you're new here, welcome. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. I have a kind of finished object. Not really. Um, I finished this <laughs> like a week ago, but I haven't blocked it, woven in the ends, or seamed it. So I love participating in the knit collage knit alongs. I just think it's super fun um, to have videos that go along with the patterns, especially when there are techniques that I'm not familiar with, like this one, which is ultra lock. So um, I just, I really love participating in those. And also you get a bunch of patterns and all the video tutorials for them. So I just think it's really, it's really good fun. And it's kind of my little splurge for the year, which it's just fun. I don't know. So last time I made a pillow for Eliza, I forgot to bring it in. Okay, so the first knit collage pillow I ever made was this, this one, I forget what it's called. Um, I don't know why I forget what this is called. Why am I, why am I determined to look things up when it's really not that important and I can just link it? Because I have to know everything. Anybody else like that? Uh, it is very... <laughs> It's very frustrating to be like that, but here we are. So it's not Dreamweaver's the pillow I am making right now. This pillow is called, what? It is called the Sunburst Pillow. Like, why did I need to do that? I don't know. <laughs> um, so this is the Sunburst Pillow. I used it, um, I used Knit Collage. Um, I feel like there's a yellow speck. Or is it on my, oh, <laughs> it's the, uh, the lighting thing on my iPhone, the thing with the little sun in the box to the brightness, it's the word, and it looked like there was a yellow speck on the pillow. Anyway, so this is the one I made last time, and I made this for Eliza, and I thought when I saw the Dreamweaver pillow, which is on Sherlock, that I would make that one as well. So this is her first pillow. And the second one is still in pieces and still need to be woven in, but I really like it. So this is the Dreamweaver pillow. And it is my first time doing Entrelock. It is obviously not perfect. Like you can see where I was uh, slip, slip knitting. I think I was doing slip, slip knits wrong, but um, yeah, so I really like this. I used three colors of 
knit collage spun cloud so i used love cloud vanilla bean and sedona i think it's called sedona but i just i really love pinks and um rusts together and then the vanilla bean and then the back panel is just garter i'm probably going to do it this way but i actually kind of like the way this looks too i don't know oh now i'm seeing it on camera because this was the original plan but now that i'm seeing it on camera i kind of like this we'll block it and see how i'm feeling so i need to wash block weave it ends seam it together which a uh, crochet edge which is pretty simple like i said there's video tutorials for all of it so that will be eliza's pillow her birthday is june 14th so we're getting there and i want to give it to her for her birthday um yeah so that's kind of a finished object hopefully i'll have a full pillow to show you next time um and then i really i haven't been knitting on much else but i picked up my what's it called my outline tank by Jesse Made Designs, and I'm I'm getting there. So this is just a cute little summer tank top that I'm planning to wear under my short overalls that I got from Old Navy. They are my favorite thing in the world. I wear them almost every day. If it was warmer today, I would be wearing them right now. But it's in the low 70s. If you're curious, with a million percent humidity. <laughs> so. Um, these holes are supposed to be there. Those are bound off stitches for when you drop stitches. Because there are some drop stitches in this design. It's so beautiful. I am using Knit Picks Kotlin DK in the Sagebrush colorway. And it is the dreamiest yarn. It's a cotton linen blend. I think it's like a 55-45. Somewhere like that. And... I really wanted to make this tank, but when I um, was looking at the suggested yarn and yarns other people used, it just wasn't in my budget. So I went for Knit Picks, which is usually where I go when I'm looking for um, more affordable yarn. And I was between this, Kotlin DK, and Lindy Chain, which is a fingering weight. And it's also a chainette yarn. It's really cool. And if I like the fit of this, I might try the lindy chain out and see how i like that um, i will probably end up having to knit a different size because my gauge i'm a very tight knitter and i also am knitting this in dk when it calls for a light sport heavy fingering so i'm knitting a size medium to get somewhere between a large and an extra large because i like <laughs> i like positive ease it's what i'm the most comfortable in and I think it's just going to be perfect. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm using US 4s on a DK weight. So it's like a really nice fabric. It's not too stiff, but it's not too loose. And because it's cotton and linen, it's very drapey and soft and beautiful. I was worried that the cotton was going to hurt my hands. Linen doesn't hurt my hands, but cotton sometimes does. Um, I knit washcloths for my bridal shower gift and uh, my mom was doing them and then she needed some help and so I knit like 20 of them and it was, and my hands were so sore after that but this is actually super nice and I can knit on it for like an hour at a time. I was binge watching Mayor of East, East Town, Easton. Is it Mayor of East Town? East Town? East Town? East Town? You know what show I'm talking about. It's on HBO Max and it has Kate Winslet in it and it is so good. Twists and turns and it is, it's wonderful. It's really good. I think it's like six or seven episodes. So I did that over the past two days after Eliza went to bed and um, worked on this a little bit and also um, played 
The Sims, which I'll talk about later. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so I really, I like this project. I'm excited to see how it feels when I wear it. And I'm hoping to have this done maybe by the end of the month. We will see. I'm on my second skein of yarn. It's going really well. So other thing I've been working on is Eliza's temperature blanket. Now I feel like I haven't talked about this in a long time because I haven't worked on it in like two months. But I love this project so much. Here, let me. So I'm using a size seven hook. It's 4.5 millimeter. It's a clover hook. Simple, wonderful. Um, and I am into September finally. So if you're new here, what I am doing, there's an entire video um, on my channel about this already, but I'll kind of give you a brief synopsis and link that video below in case you're interested. But I, for the longest time, thought it'd be really cool to knit or crochet Eliza a temperature blanket for the first year of her life. And I just kept putting it off. And then I was like in this weird mood after I gave birth and not doing great and wasn't really knitting and then was knitting a lot. And then it just, it never happened because I couldn't pick a color scheme. I finally picked a color scheme. I dyed it all myself. And so this is going from June 14th, 2018 to June 14th, 2019. So it's a full year of her life. And I'm in September. So I've done three full months. <laughs> so it's a quarter of the way done. Um, and it is massive already. So it starts up here with this pink and kind of, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I was like, oh, it kind of matches my shirt. No, it doesn't. Anyway. Um, so she was born right before summer, so she obviously is going to have a lot of warm colors that bookmark her blanket. So I went with Eloise to start and end the blanket and also um, note the change of month. So whenever you see this light pinkish stripe, that means a new month starts. So this is the beginning of the blanket, then her birthday is the first one, and then you hit... July and July was really hot except for this weird <laughs> cold day and it was like 60 degrees and then you hit August which is also really warm because we live in Michigan and then this bottom stripe is the one that I just put on but um the last time you saw this I have my little Hello Lavender RBG descent collar Um, yeah, and then, so what am I saying? Where the stitch marker was is where I was the last time I showed this. So I've done quite a bit and I'm just, I'm really loving it. I'm excited because the end of September or mid-September, we start getting into more 60 degree weather and then October hits and we get into 50s and 40s. So the color changes are coming. Um, I So we live in Michigan and um, where we live in South, is Southeast Michigan, we lived in Northville and Redford when Eliza was like this part of Eliza's life. And um, yeah, so it's, and now we live in Detroit. I know I felt like I needed to say that, but um, the way our weather works in this region <laughs> of Michigan, um, we get a lot of yo-yo-y weather in the in-between seasons. So fall and spring, our weather tends to yo-yo a lot between really hot and really cold. Uh, like <laughs> we had 50 degree weather this past week and at the end of the week starting tomorrow it's going to be in the 90s so like that is a pretty normal thing for us in the spring and also in the fall but in the summer and winter it's relatively consistent within about 20 degrees so that's just how it works so the beginning 
of her blanket, the beginning fourth of her blanket is going to be, like obviously it's going to be mostly the red, the pink, and the yellow. And then in the middle, it'll definitely be more, um, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> uh, it'll, as we transition into winter, so from summer to fall, it's going to definitely bounce around between the hot and the cold colors. And then in the middle, it's gonna be really cool. And then hot and cold, and then hot. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I am losing my mind. I did not get enough sleep last night. 6.30 comes very early. So, yeah. Drinking coffee. If anybody's curious, this is just a cold brew with some cold foam. It's really good. Um, yes, so this is the way that I'm keeping track. And it's working out really well. So that is Eliza's temperature blanket update. I'm hoping to have some more exciting colors done. Um, I'm really excited to work on this again. So that is that. And it is living in this basket I got off of Etsy. And I love it. I love it so much. I actually have another blanket that look another basket that looks like this but it's the inverse color so it's a lighter basket with um, darker accents okay so that is everything I've been working on let's talk about acquisitions and plans so let's talk about plans first so I finished my mom's half and half triangles wrap. It is a pattern by Pearl Soho. I've talked about this a million times and I've also done a full video on it when I made my first one. So um, I took a bit of a break. I took about a month off from knitting it, but I am itching to have this just stockinette square on my needles again. So I went into, this is our office closet. I share this room with my husband, Doug. His desk is right here, but it's this um, big walk-in closet that also has like a window in it. It's really cool, um, but we're just, we're kind of storing our extras in there for right now. And um, so I went in there, grabbed some of my stash, and I have a few different color combinations that I'm wanting to knit up. Oh, I didn't grab the other one. Let me go do that. I completely forgot about this combination until I was talking about it. And now I think I'm changing my mind on which one I'm casting on. You'll know next time I record because I will have done it. But so my first, my original thought was to do this. So this is peony pink and mustard yellow. And my whole thought in this was during the spring, I would knit peony pink. During the summer, I would knit turmeric yellow. Excuse me. But I really don't want to kill myself over this project. I kind of just want to pick it up and put it down. So part of me now <laughs> that it's June and we're inching towards summer in the next three weeks, which is nuts, um, I kind of want to knit this neon pink yarn. So this is pink, no, nope. I was gonna say pink pop. It is not, this is bright flamingo and it is that bright. And if you know me, if you've watched this before, you're like, Stacy, you hate this kind of thing. I was watching Caddy Jacks when they were with Debbie um, and she did this combination and I have, um, half a skein left of pale mushroom from my first half and half triangles wrap where I did pale mushroom and pink granite or rose granite. And um, I love this color so much. Pale mushroom is just, it's perfect. And these two together. And I will obviously wear <laughs> it with just the pale mushroom showing with just a little, with just a little pop, a little pop of the bright neon. And I think it would be so fun because most of my wardrobe is black, 
gray, dark, like, um, foresty army green, and this kind of pinkish buff color. Like, that's my wardrobe. So, like, I don't have... Oh, and occasionally, like, some mustard thrown in. Um, but I really, like, I mostly wear black and gray. And, um, I think... I think just having this kind of popping out would be really nice. So I also think knitting this during the summer would just be so fulfilling. <laughs> so I actually, this is what I'm gonna knit first. I will save this for maybe next year and focus, ooh, focus on this. So I actually am probably going to wind this up today. Oh, it's so beautiful. If you haven't knit a half and half triangles wrap yet, I highly recommend it. It is a huge stockinette project with short rows and you can either do wrap and turns or on um, the Caddy Jack's YouTube channel, Jackie has done a German short rows tutorial to show you how to do that. So that's great. And if you don't know how to do wrap and turns, Pearl Soho links a video tutorial on how to do that. Um, and it's a free pattern. You can use whatever yarn you want, but linen quill is so dreamy and it feels so good just wrapped around. So I highly recommend linen quill, but even if you use some leftovers, I really recommend this pattern. It's just, it's so relaxing and comforting and it's amazing. I'm making my third one. <laughs> And it's five skeins of fingering weight yarn, if that tells you anything about how great it is. So this will be on the needles next time. And then I have some acquisitions. So I didn't grab the other ones and it's not important because I don't know what I'm going to do with the other colors. So I bought this yarn specifically to make the Paige Turner shawl by... I, see, I had it up and then I had to look up the pillow and now it's not up anymore, but it's in my queue. So it's pretty easy to find. So it's the Paige Turner Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. And I am so excited about this. So I'm a huge fan of Bethany of Woolberry Fiber Company. She's just a wonderful person and friend and her yarn is so stunning. And when when she has a Cormo update, it is really hard for me to resist. And I de-stashed some of this when I was moving and then I regretted it immediately. So when she had her update, I bought four skeins. I bought two of Pink Canyon and then two of Puget Sound, which is like this greeny um, blue light color. It's beautiful. And um, she was knitting on her Paige Turner shawl. And I was like, you know what? That's what I want to make with this. I want a nice, squishy, non super wash shawl. And so it uses two skeins of um, Woolberry Hormo or two skeins of fingering weight yarn. This is 100% non super wash Hormo, 420 yards. So you could obviously substitute this for any non super washable or super washable if that's what you have. And then it also is paired with a yarn that I am always obsessed with, which is Spin Cycle Yarns. Um, again, you could substitute like Crazy Zabra Ball or um, you could even just do like a highly variegated or speckled colorway. You could use um, mini skeins or leftovers and kind of it yourself like there's just a lot of ways that you can do this but I love spin cycle and I just I really wanted to do the shawl in the yarn it was intended for so this is rusted rainbow it is not this bright in real life <laughs> um it's definitely more muted in real life but this will be my page turner shawl and I just I really love it I'm really excited about it. I think I'm going to use Rusted Rainbow. I just, I love these fall tones mixed with a pink like this. It's kind of my favorite. So that will be next on the needles at some point. 
And then um, I have other projects that I really would like to knit, but I will get to that another day. Um, oh, my mom just texted me saying we're about to get really bad weather. We have thunderstorms coming. Yay! I love thunderstorms. Um, anyway, so I'm, now I'm like looking out. I'm really excited. I love, I love thunderstorms. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, but I will be talking about upcoming projects and plans over on my Patreon channel, um, where you can support this channel financially if you so choose, but I will keep putting out free content for you all because I love doing this, but it's a really amazing way to support our family. And I appreciate it so much, especially since we have to find daycare. So, um, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, let's see. What else was I going to talk to you about? Oh, I was going to talk to you about some things that I'm really enjoying. Um, I don't do this very often and I also don't have everything with me, but I just want to chat with you about things that I love. So I already mentioned Mayor of Eastwick. I think it's Eastwick. Again, I'm going to look it up because I have to know. No, it's Easttown. <laughs> Easton. Easttown. <sighs> um, but I already talked about that. Um, that's on HBO Max. It's really, really good. And then um, Doug and I also started watching The Great North. It's an animated show. We really love Bob's Burgers. Um, that's kind of like if we're having a late night and um, like we decide to get takeout for ourselves or... Um, eat dinner after Liza goes to bed or something like that. We always put on like a stupid show that we love and we can laugh to. And Bob's Burgers is usually that show, but it's about to go on hiatus. So um, we started the Great North and we're really enjoying it. It's just a stupid, fun show and it's great. Um, what else? Um, I'm obsessed with the new with uh Olivia Rodrigo <laughs> um I know I'm not cool I know I'm old but it's I don't know it's hidden <laughs> I really like it um I've been listening to it every time I have to make my commute which is 30 minutes and it is magical <laughs> so I'm a huge fan I don't know my little angsty inner self. I was really enjoying it. What else am I enjoying? I have like three pages left of Educated by Tara, Tara, um, Tara Westover. And it is a memoir autobiography. And it is one of the most beautiful pieces of literature I've read this year. I mean, I've only read two books this year because I'm still in a reading rut, but I, so my favorite things to read are memoir, autobiographical, fictionalized, <laughs> a bird just um, perched itself on the window. Anyway, um, but like fictionalized autobiographies, stuff, I just really love human-centered storytelling. It's my favorite. So um, like it's no shock that I love Untamed and I just read Group and like my favorite book growing up was The Diary of Anne Frank and um, and then my favorite book of all time is The Bell Jar. And so, like, that's just, that's what I like. Um, so, educated. It's heartbreaking. It's beautiful. It's hopeful. And I really recommend it if you haven't read it yet. It's been out for a little bit. Um, my brother-in-law actually got it for me for Christmas. Um, he had me for Secret Santa. And I need to text him and tell him how much I loved it because it was so good really, really good. Um, anything else? Oh, so I am back on my Sims train. 
I'm not a big video game player, but I love The Sims. <laughs> and they just came out with a um, an interior decorating career pack. And it is so much fun. I've I've been playing it at night. It's really fun. So that's also something that I'm enjoying. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so that is, that's that. Um, the garden <laughs> is just a bunch of containers right now. Um, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that we probably won't be able to put um, a garden in until late summer, um, early fall, which is a little disappointing. And I'm going to try, once we figure out where our fence is going to go, because we have to put in a fence, which is... Ugh. <laughs> it's awful. Um, once we figure out where that's going, I might try to convince Doug to put at least one flower bed in so I can put in um, some Dahlia tubers that I have, but I actually have most of them in containers right now. Um, and if that's the way that I have to go, then that's fine. It's actually, I love container gardening and I'm always going to use containers. I use a mixture of real terracotta and plastic. Um, I prefer real terracotta, but cost-wise, plastic is just way cheaper. So like you can get a 16 inch terracotta pot for $20, or you can get a 16 inch plastic terracotta pot for $5. So it's just cost effective to do it that way. Um, but I actually have most of my dahlias in containers right now. And if I have to go get like six more for the ones that I was planning on putting out, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, they're in really large containers and I'm also going to stake them. Um, probably with just like a bamboo rod or something like that, just to give them stability. And then I am also still focusing on planting perennials around the border of our house. So in our front flower beds and the side flower beds, um, all of my David Austin roses are here. So that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the week, but it's been raining. So I haven't been able to get them in the ground. I also have um, two daisies that I'm putting in that I'll probably put in the side, um, the side bed maybe out front. And then um, a coneflower and a firelight hydrangea, which starts out white. And as the weather cools, it turns like this bright magenta. It's going to be beautiful. So I'm just, I'm focusing on my perennials and that way they're established for next year and might put on a little bit more growth. I'm just, I'm excited. So that's what I'm focusing on and I've really come to terms with the fact that I'm not going to have the garden of my dreams this year. It's going to have to wait a year and that is totally fine because this is probably our forever house. So I want to do it well and right and if I have to wait and I don't get a big garden this year, that's fine. I can have fun with my containers. <laughs> so, um, so that's what's going on in the garden. Um, that's really it. Eliza's birthday is coming up and I'm trying to think. I already bought all of her decorations. I bought her a linen crown with her name on it that we get to use every year. It ties in the back and it's beautiful. Um, I found it on Etsy if anybody's curious and bought balloons she loves balloons and some streamers that we can reuse and I will probably maybe not for this birthday but I'll probably make some um like fabric tassel uh bunting and like flag bunting that we can reuse over the years uh, especially once she kind of is definitive on her favorite color I'm pretty sure it's yellow I'm cool with. Yellow is a great color. But sometimes I think it's green. And so I'm just <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to kind of tell me what it is. So we'll see. Um, so we're definitely going with like a yellow green 
blush situation and it's great it feels very much like her so that's what we're doing and um our appliances are hooked up which is exciting and what else is going on we have air conditioning um because after like a uh, two weeks of our house being 85 degrees with a toddler and a dog it was it was not good um meh. Uh, so it was Memorial Day here in the States on Monday, and um, I'm pretty sure that means garbage is tomorrow because our garbage day is usually Thursday, but I just saw a garbage truck. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, but nobody has their garbage out on the street, so I'm assuming it's tomorrow. Oh, and yes, I checked with the city on the website. It says it's tomorrow, but I just saw a garbage truck. Maybe the next street over is a different day than us. I don't know. Um, what am I going to say? I don't know. So I'm probably going to wind some yarn. And I might order lunch for myself and just kind of enjoy some time alone while Doug is at work and Eliza's at my mom's. Um, because I have to go to work four days a week starting the 28th so I'm done working from home at the end of the month and I'm kind of bummed about it but I'm also excited to see students in person um yeah <laughs> so I, I'm just gonna try to like really relish in being home the next two weeks uh so i think that's everything if you've stayed this long during my rambling you're wonderful thank you um thank you for watching and i will see you next month bye